White teachers can combat race-based traumas in schools by raising their own race consciousness. Start by recognizing the privilege attached to your race. Notice how this privilege impacts your pedagogical and behavior management decisions and read about the history of racism and start talking about race. Then bring those conversations to your students. Hi, I'm Erin Silcox from TraumaInformedTeachers.com. I'm here with practical tools for conscientious educators like you. As a teacher, you're in the perfect position to either perpetuate or interrupt race-based traumas in schools. This starts with your own anti-racist work and can translate into anti-racist instruction for your students. Keep watching to learn how an increased racial awareness can help disrupt race-based traumas in schools. Many teachers actually claim to be colorblind. A lot of folks, a lot of white folks in particular, believe that being colorblind is a good thing. But in reality, refusing to see color is a refusal to recognize how your own race privileges you in so many ways. It impacts how you see the world. And most importantly, it impacts your pedagogical and behavior management decisions. So what do you do? Well, Alvarez et al. 2016 recommends um, and so do so many other scholars. They recommend that white teachers need to start by recognizing the privilege inherent in whiteness. What you can do is to delve into your own race. You can delve into how it impacts your decision making, how it impacts your worldview or how you see the world. And a great, great tool to start with is Peggy McIntosh's White Privilege, Unpacking the Invisible Knapsack. I'm going to link that below in the show notes. It was published in 1990, and it really helps to start pointing out the way that whiteness privileges us, and it's something we didn't ask for. It's something that we um, are sort of blind to. We're blind to race, and therefore talking about it can really be uncomfortable for us. So after you read um, the Unpacking the Invisible Knapsack, start to unpack your racial, racial assumptions from their roots to their consequences. So what you're doing is you're, you're doing a self-study in which you're being mindful to the way that you, um, the sort of the ways that you've been raised and the messages that you've had of racialized others, people who aren't white, and see how, how the messages you've received about these folks um, lead to assumptions. And you want to look at the assumptions and maybe do some writing to investigate where do those assumptions stem from. I've personally found that a lot of the race-based assumptions that I have are rooted in, in media exposure. Um, and then what you need to do is, is go from the root to the consequence. So why does a particular race-based assumption matter and how does it impact how you um, choose to, you know, what text you choose to read with your students and, and what types of learning activities you engage in and how much you value um, competition in your classroom versus cooperation. And, and then you can start to redirect those assumptions and their consequences and, and then prevent them from impacting your students, especially your students of color. So that's sort of step one, is like figuring out your own situation. The next step is to bring these conversations up in your school. Make yourself more comfortable talking about race. Like I said, most white people are com really uncomfortable talking about race, and you need to change that. And the only way to change that is by getting used to doing it. And um, it's inevitable that you're going to make some mistakes, but don't give up. Be aware uh, enough to learn from those mistakes and just ask folks, what was it that I said that really was not okay? Or um, just look within and, and always, always, always be reading and be growing and, and do your own research. There are so many resources out there. Another one that I'll share in the show notes is, is Helms's, um, I don't remember the year, but Helms's uh, racial identity development in their there are racial identity development trajectories for people of color as well as for white people. And so 
once you've done this personal work, once you start talking about race with your colleagues, then you could start to breach these topics with your students. And when we name race, we can really begin to break it as, at its strongest points. First, recognize that you do have a race and that impacts how you interact with the world, including how you uh, interact with your students and your pedagogy.